testing when we're also working with someone, especially when they have hearing aids or cochlear implants, we're gonna look for their most comfortable loudness level. This is done, again, I said people that have uh, hearing aids. So the hearing level at which speech is most comfortably loud. For most people with normal hearing, that's between 40 and 55 decibels above their threshold. So ML MCL is done with continuous discourse speech, so say a reading passage, a paragraph. You start at a hearing level that's slightly above the SRT. With your cold reading speech, you gradually increase the intensity. At a certain hearing level, the patient should respond whether the speech is too soft or too loud or most comfortable. I always compare this um, to the when I get an eye exam and the doctor will say, does it look better like this or like that or like this or like that? And sometimes I feel like it looks the same both ways. So your MCL, when you're about 45, 50 dB above a person's threshold, they're going to say, yeah, it sounds good here. Maybe it sounds good a little bit louder, but it's going to, you know, bounce 5 dB around that same area. Uncomfortable loudness level is very important when you're fitting hearing aids. For normal hearing people, the upper limit is usually between 100 and 110 decibels. That's kind of the top limit of the audiometer, and that's the level where sounds become uncomfortably loud. For people with hearing loss, in addition to not hearing soft sounds correctly, loud sounds become uncomfortably loud, and this is called recruitment. So with a person who has a damaged cochlea, in addition to not being hear able to hear soft sounds, loud sounds also become uncomfortably loud. So you need to know a person's uncomfortable loudness level if they have a hearing loss when you're fitting a hearing aid because you wanna make sure that sounds don't come, become uncomfortably loud and make the person uh, not wanna wear their hearing aids. So again, you start around 80 decibels, you move up until the person says stop, okay? And that's their uncomfortable loudness level. Now, a person's dynamic range of hearing is the arithmetic difference between their SRT and their UCL. So the dynamic range equals a UCL minus a speech recognition threshold, and that is the range of comfortable listening, which is helpful for hitting, fitting hearing aids. So I have normal hearing. I'm going to have a very large dynamic range. Let's say I hear at 110 decibels, and, you know, that's fine and my threshold is down at um, 10 decibels. That means I have a 110 decibel range of hearing. Now a person with hearing loss, their SRT, their lowest level that they can hear speech and recognize it as speech, might be 40 decibels. And the level where sounds become uncomfortably loud for them might be 80 decibels. So 80 minus 40 is simply 40 decibels. So they have a very limited range, dynamic range of hearing, a person with hearing loss in my example, only 40 decibels. Your goal as an audiologist is to take that 40 decibels and expand it. So you want to help that person with their by giving them hearing aids or cochlear implants and making soft sounds easier to hear, so lowering their speech recognition threshold and making sure that sounds don't become uncomfortably loud. So the dynamic range is also important when you're, t especially when you're fitting someone with a hearing aid. So, so far we speak about the most comfortable level, loudness level, the uncomfortable loudness level, and the dynamic range of hearing. We also spoke about that speech recognition threshold. Now we're going to talk about speech recognition testing, which is different from threshold, speech recognition threshold. A common complaint of people with sensory neural hearing loss. The most common complaint of people with cochlear sensory neural hearing loss is that they have difficulty understanding speech. So they say, I can hear that you're speaking, but I can't understand what you're saying. Okay, so they have damaged outer hair cells in their cochlea. They're able to detect that speech is going on, but they're having trouble recognizing what is being said. And that's where speech recognition testing comes in because we want to see their degree of disability with their hearing loss. How is the hearing loss affecting a person's ability to recognize and participate in a speech conversation? To do this, we're going to determine someone's speech recognition score, which determines the extent of the speech recognition difficulty. It aids in the diagnosis of the site of the disorder in the auditory system 
helps in determining the need for and the proper selection of amplification systems, and helps the clinician to make a prognosis for the outcome of treatment. We test with um, nonsense syllables, digits, monosyllabic words, and sentences. We can use open test procedures or closed test procedures, and the testing is commonly done at 40 decibels above a person's speech recognition threshold or at their most comfortable loudness level. With open responses, they're more challenging than closed responses. So an opening response would be like a fill in the blank test and a closed response would be like a multiple choice test. So with an open response test, I could go say the word ball and the patient could say whatever they want. They could say wall, they could say call, they could say tall. If I were to use a closed response test, I would say point to the word ball and then they'd have a choice of like four to six words to choose from or pictures or whatnot. So closed response is easier than an open response test. We use phonetically balanced word lists, a PB word list. And this is a list that contains all the phonetic elements connected in English discourse in their normal proportion to one another. So sounds that are more common in English will come up more often on the word list. It's a list of 50 words that is read at one level. So there's no threshold testing. 40 dB above a person's um, threshold. I'm just going to read this phonetically balanced word list. I'm going to read these words kind of uh, monotonously and each correct response, the person will get two points, each incorrect will get two minus two. There's also a list that is used for kindergartens but with the same idea. Um, Again, not a test of vocabulary, I'm just testing their receptive language skills. Another form of the test is the consonant nucleus test, um, scored the same way as the PB word list. But the PB word list, the phonetically balanced word list, is most common. And to save time, instead of reading the full 50 word list, a lot of times just the 25 word list, 25 words are read. Each word is worth four points.